What's up, boopers, and welcome to my Black Desert Online guide to Yasuo and Fiora. I mean, Blader and Plum. Now, while they use almost all the same skills, their playstyles and a few skills are different, so we'll go over those differences. Also, this will be my first video with English translations! Yay! So let's get started. Boop. Bladers and Plums both use blades in their main hand and horn bows in their offhand. Their two primary resources are stamina and something called WP, I'm just going to call it energy, that starts with a maximum of 100. Note that most mana potions work on restoring this just like mana resources. The basic attack bound to left click is called slice. It does moderate damage at higher ranks and also returns your energy. It gets increased attack range and increased energy restore the higher you skill it, and you can also skill an additional component that makes this attack inflict a bleed effect onto your enemies. Now we've got two forms of mobility. The first is a simple dodge rule usable left, right, and backward by holding shift. This consumes stamina. The second form of mobility is called chase and has three ranks. Chase consumes energy and provides a momentary invincibility frame and will be a huge part of playing your class in both PvP and PvE, so it's important to master its use. It allows you to dash forward or backwards while charging forward to enemies. It will not ignore collision, but it does ignore collision when moving backwards, meaning to get through enemies you'll have to spin your camera around and use it in reverse. At max rank, this skill will get energy cost reduction, increased travel distance, and most importantly, the ability to cast to cancel some of your swing animations, giving you the ability to react to incoming attacks mid-attack. You can use a neat trick with max rank of chase by comboing it with rank 1 of your forward kick, which we'll go over in a second. Just right click and move forward, and while you are doing it, hold the F button. This will cause you to kick and cancel the kick instantly to spam dash at a really fast speed. Next we'll go over retaliation stance. This is done by pressing and holding Q to hold up your sword and block incoming attacks. It's pretty important to master. While in Q, you can left click to execute a counter slash to deal damage, or if you are attacked, you will counter automatically, but this has a cooldown. This counter does have a knockdown component and does a lot of damage, and when you block attacks with your Q, you will lose block durability, which is restored by letting go of block over time. Let's go over divider next. Usable by pressing E, you will slash forward multiple times while lunging forward. The first attack knocks in PvE and the second in PvP. The most notable part of the skill is its bit of lifesteal as long as it is used when your energy is above 10% and it is a decent form of sustain for your blader or plum. Next let's talk about whirlwind, another skill that restores your energy, usable by hitting left click and A or D. You can swing to the side three times while moving around your enemy. Ranking this up will also add an armor debuff to the third swing and even a tornado at max rank. We've got two passives on Blader and Plum. One will increase your melee attack and the other will increase your melee evasion. Each point in these skills will take three skill points, so if you even second guess taking these, you're probably smoking something really good and you should share it. Now before we go into the cool sword stuff, let's cover the bow and kick stuff. Starting with kicks. We've got upper kick, blunt kick, sweep kick, and roundhouse kick. Now upper kick, hotkey just to F, will knock enemies into the air and onto their backs. Blunt kick, hotkey to shift F, will flinch your enemies temporarily. S and F will perform a sweep kick which can knock your enemies prone by tripping them. And lastly, roundhouse kick from hitting W and F will knock opponents backward. To use your bow, you need to hold shift and right click and the basic shot has a cooldown that can be ignored to deal less damage. It gets a bonus damage in PvP and on horseback restores energy. Higher ranks make you shoot multiple shots. Another component is grapple. After landing an arrow, you can hit the spacebar to pull yourself toward the target. At max rank, you are given the ability to hit spacebar again to cancel mid grapple. Next is to charge your arrow simply by holding the shot. Higher ranks allow you to dash while charging and adding a knockdown. This is mainly done for damage and its knockdown component in PvP. Lastly, Evasive Shot allows you to dash to the side by right clicking and hitting a direction, A or D, and it will cause you to strafe to the side while releasing a shot. At max rank, this says 6 second cooldown. So be careful if you're trying to use this, because if it's on cooldown, you'll end up just casting chase. And lastly, an important skill as a blader and plum is hotkey to shift and E, and this is called blader or plum spirit. 
and will quickly restore you to full energy. Higher ranks will increase how much it restores and its cooldown is reduced and it can be cast very quickly in combat as an alternative to potion chugging. And so I don't forget, you'll also get a skillable passive to increase knockback and flinch resistances. Okay, time for cool sword stuff. Let's go. Let's start with back step slash. Hold S key and spacebar to jump backward and swing wide in front of you, slowing targets hit. A great disengage and at max rank, it slows for a whopping 50% for 10 seconds with an increased range. Next, we've got the blind strike combo. Blind strike is cast by auto attacking and then hitting the spacebar. It uses stamina and restores energy and will apply an accuracy reduction debuff on successful hits. Higher ranks grant higher crit chance, but the crit is not boosted when used during its cooldown. Holding spacebar during this skill will release another wide swing called Nemesis Slash. Now this skill cannot be used on cooldown and has a 13 second cooldown. It does a lot of damage, but when this skill is put at max rank, it will release a tornado on a 30 second cooldown. Now while Blind Strike uses stamina, this attack uses energy, and the Whirlwind component does heal for a bit of HP based on the amount of targets hit. Another alternative to Nemesis is to combo Blind Strike into Blind Slash, but this doesn't need to be comboed, it's usable with S and E, and knocks enemies upwards, later being able to add a kick component to the skill as well. Now here, the Plum gets a leg up and has a sneaky extra skill called Backstabbing that allows her to strike Blind Strike a second time outside of the combo. This does a lot of damage and adds a faint effect with a knockback and a 100% crit chance with high damage but a 12 second cooldown. Next, Carver. While holding Shift during your auto attacks, you will swap from Slice to using this skill, unleashing a heavy swing to knock up enemy and knock them back at the cost of stamina. Higher ranks increase the number of swings added and the final rank adding a knockdown. These attacks restore your energy just like your auto attacks though. The third last skill that they both have in common is Dragon Bite combo. By hitting S and left clicking you can choose to charge up a forward thrust or use it instantly. This is a miniature gap closer when fully charged it does a lot of damage though and is one of your hardest hitting stamina based attacks. Fully charged, the attack will knock back, but not if used on cooldown. Also reduce damage on cooldown use. If you have 100% black spirit energy, it will instead unleash a flurry of blows at all targets in front of you, and you can turn around while it's channeling. Holding the left click after casting will cast its second combo component, Dragon Claw, and holding it further will do a Lunar Slash. These two attacks do have a ton of damage, Lunar being the most, but they have cooldowns that cannot be ignored like Dragon Bite cooldown. Now that we've learned about all the Tiger Sword skills, let's learn what Tiger Sword is. This is a damage cooldown with a 2 minute 30 second cooldown that will temporarily equip you with a second sword, increasing your attack speed, movement speed, and defense for 30 seconds. While in this stance, you will only be able to use your right click dash, your auto attack, your whirlwind strafe, your dragon bite combo that we just learned, and the carver combo from hitting ship. And lastly, divider by pressing E. The rest of your skills will become unusable during this time, but you'll notice the majority of your usable skills had lifesteal components, and your dash will now be a complete invincibility frame during this time. This is basically your Super Saiyan mode. Last skill that they have in common is Blooming. It has a swing time, makes you invisible while swinging, and stuns, and has a high crit chance and damage ratio. It has a secondary component to be skilled that adds additional damage, a bleed effect, and mana steal. Now if you swing it by itself, it has a very long swing time. However, if you cast chase first and combo it out of chase by holding both mouse buttons down and hitting shift, it will cast instantly and it's a great way to suddenly stun somebody and do some burst damage in PvP. Okay, let's go over the differences between Blader and Plum now. So Blader will get an attack called Gale. By holding left and right mouse, you will swing forward several times and unleash a tornado with multiple hits to enemies around you. This knocks them back and down and does a lot of damage, at max rank with 12 second cooldown. For Plum, instead she will be using a skill called Behead. It also does a lot of damage and will be a main part of her rotation. Instead of a knockback, Plum's skill will use a feint. Next, Blader will get a skill called Rising Storm, and this will be your main damage skill as a Blader for AoE grinding. It has two hotkeys, I recommend using Shift and Q as the hotkey to cast this, making you spin and do a lot of damage in a wide area. It pulls enemies in, gets a lot of damage and crit bonus, then knocks them back. It is usable on cooldown for its damage without reduction, but it loses its knock effect. 
This skill can be comboed into Cyclone Smash by holding both left and right mouse buttons after to shoot a tornado for more damage that can knock back and knock up enemies Yasuo style. However, I do recommend to put Cyclone Smash on your hotkey bar instead so that it can be used freely as you'll usually want to use this as its own ranged attack and you'll want to make use of Rising Storm's final skill component, Blaze, which allows you to cast Rising Storm a second time in a row. Plum, on the other hand, instead will be using Red Moon, hotkeyed also to Shift and Q. It can also combo into Cyclone Smash, and similarly, I'd say to put this on your hotkey bar instead. This will be your main damage skill as a plum. It will make you take reduced damage while attacking all targets around you for a few seconds. Max rank adds a secondary hit that swings backward in a whirlwind and also adds a slow to enemies. However, one key difference between plum skill and the blader skill is that plums cannot be used when it is on cooldown. This means she cannot spam it and it will force the plum to use other skills and changes her playstyle significantly from the blader. So let's look at the playstyles. In PvE, you'll mainly be using Chase and your Hornboat to group up monsters so that you can either Rising Storm or Red Moon them all to death. Using Divide and Whirlwind for energy and health sustain, you can mix a lot of your different skills for CC and extra damage as both of the classes have a ton of good damage combos that take a while to master. In PvP, you'll want to make good use of your mobility and guard counter skills with the different sword combos in your bow to avoid taking damage when gap closing until you can get openings to lay into them using your heavy skills. It's a good reason to hotkey Cyclone Smash so you can throw it out between chases. Blader and Plum are a class that rewards skill and timing and punish mistakes heavily. My ping and gear are so bad I didn't really bother to demonstrate it but I'll put links in the description that show some Plums and Bladers PvPing. Bosses are done similarly by using mobility skills to avoid getting hit and using your hardest hitting skills at every possible opening. While Blader and Plum do look similar, their playstyles do end up being different, and you'll really need to master managing which skills use what resources so that you never have downtime between your attacks and gap close quickly. For curing, you'll want to grab Yuria with a black horn bow or Laverto and white horn bows. For armor, you'll want to go for Niels or Tartaros and Rotary. For Awakenings, you'll want damage on Red Moon or Rising Storm, attack speed on Whirlwind and Cyclone Smash, and some absorption on Divider. And that's it! Hopefully this guide helps you choose between Blader or Plum. There's more to it this time than just boobs or balls. Let me know in the comments which one you'll choose, and if it's because of the gender or the skills. A lot of you guys want Sort Guide next, but I want to hold off until Awakening is released, same with Giant, so I'll go over Valkyrie and Ninjas next and I'll be streaming the launch of the EU Alpha. Link to the stream in the description, but until then, I am pooping out. Boop.